What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 16 of the Road to Glory with FC United and Manchester. Hopefully you guys are good. I'm I'm very happy today. Um, I'm actually recording this on Sunday the 10th uh, and I hit 400 subscribers today. So this is probably the first video I've ever done with the intention of uploading it in a few hours time. Uh, so just a really quick thank you for... Um, I guess that massive landmark. I think I've also hit 8,000 or 9,000 video views. Uh, so that's another, you know, massive thing for me. But 400 subscribers, I just want to say a really big thank you. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the uploads yesterday. If you were living under a rock or missed them, uh, I actually uploaded four Pentagon Challenge episodes. And they were received really well with all four getting over 100 likes combined, uh, which is more than I could ever kind of imagine or dream of. So just thanks a lot for that. Um, if you missed them and you've not got time to watch them all, just watch episode 22. Uh, it's the Chinese FA Cup final and it's really worth a watch but anyway enough rambling about the Pentagon Challenge this is actually the first time I've opened this save in about a week which is really odd because when you record videos you usually I usually have a few stockpiled um, but I've just really not I've been really getting into my Pentagon Challenge series and so this series has slightly been neglected but that said, we've got quite a lot of games to cover. Um, so the last video that I covered was the FA Cup second round replay. And since then, you'll notice that we've been on a fantastic run of games. I mean, uh, how many games is it? I think it's 10 games. We'll, we'll go with 10. It might be 11. I can't count very quickly. I think it's 10. 10. We'll go with 10. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> 10 games, 7 wins, 2 draws and only 1 loss. So that loss came against Bishop Stortford, which um, is a little bit disappointing. But what these good run, run of results have meant is that um, with a game in hand, we are nestled quite nicely in 4th place in the league. And if we win our game in hand, we go 5 points clear into the playoffs, which would be a really nice cushion. And we can start to maybe look forward and look up the table. Uh, today's match game is against Kettering, so it's going to be a pretty big game. Uh, Chester, Chester are really running away with the title this year. Uh, I really don't feel as if I'm going to be able to catch up with them. Uh, but let's they, cover the fixtures anyway. I'm not going to go into too much detail just because there was a lot of games uh, since, like kind of between episodes because I chose to do a quite big break. So I'm just going to cover some of the bigger results. Um, so I guess a pretty big result was the 4-1 win against Canvey Island. They were in the playoffs uh, when we played them, and this result leaped us right above them in the table. You'll also notice Alex Evans getting on the score sheet twice for us. Uh, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't rave about Alex Evans enough. If you start a new save, he's a free agent. Just go sign him as a centre back. He could play as a League One centre back very easily. Um, but he's an absolute beast, and he's only 19. Uh, well, on my save, he's now 21, because we're in the future. But the guy, the guy's a god, and you'll see this game was a very comfortable result in the end, with us getting away 19 shots and 6 on target, and they only managed to get 2 on target for the entire game. Evans winning the ball in the air from a set piece, that is what he does, I guess, best. And that was only 11 minutes into the game. We then followed up with a second goal in the game, uh, coming in the 15th minute, yeah, 14th, 15th minute uh, this time, ball not very well played by their keeper, we are able to get the ball, we retain it quite well, uh, just kind of building up play nice and fluidly, uh, and the ball comes to Reed. no it doesn't, I'm lying. Oh god, these games are so old and we're getting one of the pointless long replays, uh, but no, Reed here, uh, yeah, Reed has been a beast. Reed has been a beast. That's all I'm going to say. This guy, he's 16. I'll show you his stats in a second. Uh, I think I actually covered him a few videos ago, but it's a while ago. And if you missed the video, you're going to kind of want to see what he looks like. But that made it 2-0. Um, Alex Evans then grabbed his second of the game and the third for our team in the closing stages of the first half, uh, making it 3-0 at the break. Very comfortable. Uh, second half, we did kind of take off uh, off the pedal, I guess. Um and uh, they pulled one back pretty soon into the second half to make it 3-1. Uh, fortunately, we were able to see out the game, and we got a fourth goal from... Um, who was it from? Who was the goal from? It was from Jerome Wright over on the left-hand side of the pitch for us. Uh, we've been playing really well, though. Like You may remember in the previous episode, I was a little concerned about the league fun, but uh, league form, but I was kind of clinging on to the hope that... Uh, you know, oh, we're doing well in the uh, the cup and we're on a cup run. So when we got knocked out in the second round with the chance to play Everton, I was a little bit disheartened. But 
Fortunately for us, we have kind of hit the ground running in the league now, and seven wins in the last ten has certainly kind of launched us into a very secure playoff spot, which is really what I kind of aimed for at the start of the season. Uh, here's the last goal, though. Wright charging in at the back post, just to tide a little finish into the bottom left-hand corner uh, to make it 4-1. Other results that have gone our way... Um, we got a another convincing 4-1 win against Hickley. Uh, we also beat Boston, my little hometown. Uh, the game against Hickley was another game where we kind of dominated from the off and we were in fact 4-0 up in this one, 60% uh, of possession. We, we've been creating a lot of chances compared to what we were, uh, I've certainly noticed, over the break. Uh, in our last five, we've only won two, which is a little bit worrying, but there's only been one goal in the results, in fact, uh, in all of the last five. So I'm not... I guess I guess we're not in the greatest form, but we've got a few big games coming up against Chester um, and Kettering. I think Chester's going to be the next episode video, just because there isn't that many games in um, February, and so it might make it just a little bit more sense to uh, go straight to the Chester game for the next episode, because that's a huge game for us against a team who are really up there in the table. But anyway, I'm going to get straight into the game today, and I've just remembered we need to cover transfers, because it's that time of year again in January. Um... I can't remember if any of these players went out on loan before, but I've basically loaned out some of our, I guess, hot prospects. In terms of ins, uh, three players came in since the previous episode. Uh, I added to my collection of cent central midfielders with Joe Rothwell. I now have five or six really good centre mids, and I mean like centre mids that could play in our league and above. Uh, my hope is that I might be able to sell a few of them on for money, uh, which would help to boost the club's finances maybe once we reach League One uh, on you know next year. Uh, that's kind of the main hope. Uh, we've also got Donald Love, who's a really good right back. I do have State as a right back already. Uh, um, but this guy's just quite a nice, I guess, backup player to have. He's a Scotland under uh, 21s international at the age of 19. Not the craziest stats, but uh, I guess a useful player to have at the back and add some, I guess, competition for states for the right back position. And then the last signing I made was Angus Gunn. Uh, this guy, I, I have faith that this guy could potentially be our future goalkeeper for the next few seasons at least. He's an under-21 uh, under Scotland international goalkeeper at the age of 18. He's only just turned 18. Um, and then, I mean, if I compare him to Spencer, because um, there's Angus Gunn, who I am starting over Spencer. Um, I mean, Spencer's a good player, but he's like 28. So I guess he's not an old player, but he's not improving and... I guess Angus Gunn just has a bit more potential about him. Uh, you'll notice that they're two very kind of different kinds of goalkeepers. Uh, I've got Spencer uh, uh, tutoring Angus Gunn at the moment, and my hope is that kind of, I guess some of State uh, Spencer's kind of experience and ability will rub off on him. But they were the only free transfers on the ins. Uh, you can really see how our squad's built for the future now. I mean, I was looking at this the other day. The potential ability of our squad is crazy. It's really a squad that can, I guess, grow in the next few years. And I'd like to think a lot of these players will still be with us in uh, League One. Just a quick look actually at Billy Reid because I said I'd look at him. He is the uh, right winger that we have. Uh, he actually has his uh, personality at professional, which is really useful. Um, I mean that he trains better and he's a I guess really ideal player for our club uh, really lucky regen as well really lucky to get him in uh, on regen day last year but anywho let's get straight on to this game against Kettering this is a massive game for us against the team who are second in the league uh, gives us a good chance to I guess make up some crucial ground on them who are I guess 11 points ahead of us so they are they've got a nice little bit of a cushion but we have to win these kind of games if we want to really push for a potential charge up towards the top of the table so i'm just gonna go with a nice uh you're the underdogs you know just go and relax and play your natural game um and hopefully we can do good here we are playing in the white strip of fc united of manchester uh, and i'm just really looking for a half decent result here uh, they are a very good team Kettering and we are away from home uh, I want to try really attacking these guys from the off hopefully it pays off in our favour let's get match facts up for you guys so you can get see what's happening um, there we go uh, so it's pretty 50-50 at the moment at half time it doesn't look like many chances have really been created by either team which is um, I don't know that's a little bit odd um, I'm actually going to switch to control uh, try and get a bit more of the ball and maybe try and create a bit more. Um, get everyone nice and relaxed for the second half. Uh, where's shout instructions? 
Um, there we go. I'm going to tell the team to keep the ball if we can. It looks like Kettering are edging the ball now, but 0-0 wouldn't necessarily be a bad result. I'd be happy to take a point away from home against Kettering. Um, it's the kind of game that if we draw, it kind of cements our chances of getting the playoffs. If we beat them, it gives us a fighting chance of maybe being able to catch up with the leading pack at the top of the table. But this is probably the first highlight of the game, and State's just passed it straight back to their player. And luckily for us, our absolute beast in goal, a uh, young lad whose name I can't remember, has managed to pull off an insane save there. Uh, and I think a free kick's been given in our favour. In fact, it has. So that's good to see. Um, a little bit worrying that that ball was played by State there, but I have faith. And where's York through here? Bury that, my son. Ooh, 69 minutes in. That would have been a nice chance to go 1-0 up a little bit worrying a little bit we're not creating a lot but neither are they this is just one of those games where i think it's just getting bogged down in the midfield um but i'd i'd, I'd be happy with a point i think it i don't know i feel as if the maybe a chance of the automatic top spot is has kind of escaped us this year now chester really running away with the table um but this is the kind of game that if we could get a point from it would give us a chance and get the ball out get the ball out there we go that'll do um, you know, if we get a point from this game, it's the kind of thing that we can look at as a point that gets us in the playoffs. It's, I don't know. I'd, I, I'd be happy with it. But it, it, this has been a very boar draw game. There's been a few of these which I've had to live comp, so I apologise for them. Not a lot I can do, unfortunately, in the grand scheme of things. But I will take a nil-nil draw against Kettering because they're a very good team. Um, Team didn't play too badly either. A lot of kind of seven point whatever ratings, which is good to see. We edged possession. We actually had more total shots, and so perhaps we're a little bit unlucky not to uh, get the win. Uh, I just want to check actually what the score against Kettering was previously. I'm pretty sure they beat us, so a draw away is a very hard earned and well deserved point. And you can see just here we're on 51 points. We're three points clear. So uh, I guess Canvey Island, who are I guess the team just lurking outside the playoffs lost uh did they lose yeah they lost to bradford pa so that gives us a nice little cushion with our game in hand to really i guess secure and cement a good kind of playoff ambitious attempt i mean as i said chester running away with the table if we win our game in hand they'll still be 12 points clear i can't see us catching them but a playoff place looks very likely but anywho, guys, I apologise for the nil-nil draw. Uh, I try and make things interesting, but sometimes there's just games that can't be made interesting. But ultimately, it's not too bad a result in the grand scheme of things. Uh, episode 17 will be the game against Chester. Hopefully you stay tuned for that. As always, if you could like the video, um, helps me out, helps out my channel. Uh, again, thank you very much for 400 subscribers. You guys are all legends. And other than that, I'll talk to you guys in a bit. Thanks for watching. It's me, Jack, and I'm out.